The unqualified men of Watchtower have wrongfully assumed the authority to make medical decisions on behalf of their members, even in situations of life and death. Can I get your name and where you're from, if you, if you don't mind? I'm Kai. Kai, can I get spelling for you? Straight buddy? out of Dogtown, K-A-I. Hola chula, thank you so much for clicking on to this video, and if you are new here, well then hi, hello, my name is Kai, and if you're coming back to my channel, well then, it's great to see you babe. Here on my channel, I like to share my experience as a person who has left the Jehovah's Witnesses organization and what it was like to grow up in a high control Christian cult. And now I do have to be honest with you guys, the subject of today's video is rather um, depressing. I guess just like watch at your own discretion. So in case you didn't know, Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to accept whole blood transfusions since they believe that it would be against God's will. They also claim that this is one of the many factors that distinguishes them as God's one true chosen people. Many faiths believe that the ingesting of blood is condemned in the Bible. This command was written in a letter from Paul to the early converts. Acts 15, 28 and 29. First we'll read Acts 15, 28 and 29 from the New World Translation, which is the exclusive translation of the Watchtower organization. For the Holy Spirit and we ourselves have favored adding no further burden to you except these necessary necessary things, to keep abstaining from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood. From another translation, let's take a look at that very same scripture. You need to do only these things. Do not eat any food that has been offered to idols. Do not taste blood. So obviously there's a difference from saying abstain from blood and abstain from eating blood. Those we, we can all agree that those mean two different things. If we stay in my Bible and go up to verse 20, it also says do not taste blood. What we'll notice in the New World Translation is that Acts 15 20 has actually had an ellipsis attached to it, and wherever you see that ellipsis, it's meant that the context has been stripped from that passage. So in one version, it says to not taste it twice, and they have gone out of their way to change their scriptures to fit with this belief. There's also like very little reason that the people in the Bible would have written about a medical advancement such as a blood transfusion, seeing that the first one didn't occur until the late 1600s. So that's pretty funny, right? That's like, mm, it's kind of strange, right? Okay, hot girl science lesson. Whole blood is comprised of four main parts. You can already tell how difficult this is for me. <laughs> four main parts, your red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. And each of these four components can be broken down into smaller fractions. Jehovah's Witnesses are not able to accept whole blood transfusions or these component transfusions, but they are able to use products derived from these fractions as of the year 2000. A Watchtower article published on June 15th of 2000 says, Beyond that, when it comes to fractions of any of the primary components, each Christian, after careful and prayerful meditation, must conscientiously decide for himself. I think it's important to note that like the year 2000 is pretty late in the game for them to have made this declaration. Prior to 1980, they weren't even allowed to have vaccinations that had products derived from blood in them, nor were they able to have organ transplants. In a passage in the book of Matthew chapter 12, we see Jesus make reference to the rabbinic principle of Pequach Nefesh. That says, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a ditch on the Sabbath day, then you will take the sheep and help it out of the ditch. Surely a man is more important than a sheep. So the law of Moses allows people to do good things on the Sabbath day. Pikiwak Nefesh, according to MyJewishLearning.com, explains it like this. The preservation of human life takes precedence over all the other commandments in Judaism. The Talmud emphasizes this principle by citing the verse from Leviticus 18.5. You shall therefore keep my statutes, which if a man do, he shall live by them. The rabbis add that he shall live by them and not that he shall die by them. When life is involved, all Sabbath laws may be suspended to safeguard the health of the individual. 
The principle being rescuing a life in danger takes precedence over the Sabbath. Jesus himself also said that it should be that life supersedes the law and that it is always necessary to do the merciful thing. Between the teachings found in the Talmud and in the New Testament, it's pretty obvious that Watchtower just didn't get it right on this one, and their blatant disregard for human life is immoral according to their own standards. But these restrictions go way farther than just accepting a blood transfusion, as is noted in a 2006 Kingdom Ministry article. Jehovah's Witnesses do not accept transfusions of whole blood or the four primary components of blood, namely red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. They also do not donate or store their own blood for transfusion. If we go down to the 2000 Watchtower article, blood is not to be stored it is to be poured out, returned to God, as it were. And following up with a letter to all hospital liaison committees sent in 2018, we would like to inform you of an updated policy with regard to whether a Christian may administer a blood transfusion if he is directed to do so by a superior. A Christian who is a nurse or doctor respects the scriptures and therefore would not recommend order or administer a blood transfusion. Which when you think about it is kind of irresponsible for larger society. If you're a person who gets into a horrible car accident, heaven forbid, but you have to be rushed to the hospital and it's obvious that you're losing blood and you need a transfusion. I mean, the odds are like one in eight million, but you could possibly have a nurse or a doctor who is a Jehovah's Witness who feels like it would be improper to recommend that you need a blood transfusion. That would mean life or death in this situation and they would still not be able to do that. Isn't that like contradictory to the Hippocratic Oath or anything? How you could even put that into your doctrine or command people to how they can do their jobs? Like, I'm okay, I'm obviously very upset by this because I just, like I said, I think it's super irresponsible and you're making it more difficult for people, for other people who aren't even part of your religion to get life-saving care. Like anything else, the Watchtower organization has flip-flopped on this belief for many years now. Prior to 1945, there actually was no ban on blood and they just followed the directive in the scripture to preserve life in every situation, even when there's a law that condemns it to do so, you need to save that person's life. Over the years, blood fractions have gone from being totally unacceptable to God to being partially acceptable to being totally fine today. Either Jehovah is nothing more than a petulant child incapable of making up his mind even when it results in the death of thousands of sick and vulnerable people, or it's an entirely made up belief. Since 1961, it's estimated that approximately 30,000 Jehovah's Witnesses have lost their lives due to refusing blood. But it's okay because it's just free propaganda fodder for the masses. That's right, if you die, the organization will go on to exploit your death for their benefit. They don't even have any qualms about doing this when the person was a young child. In 1994, they released an Awake magazine dedicated to 26 children who had lost their lives because they refused to take blood. In another article, also found on JW.org, they said that it was a myth that many witnesses, children or adults die due to their teachings on blood. You can't have it both ways. You can't sit there and have all of these examples of faithful witnesses dying for their faith, dying loyal to Jehovah, and then turn around and say, well, mm -mm, actually it's really not that big of a deal. You, you can't do that. That's gross. Watchtower also uses Matthew 16, 25 as another biblical justification for this teaching. And if we read that from the New World Translation, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Really, what good will it do a man if he gains the whole world? but loses his life, or what will a man give in exchange for his life? And again, we're gonna take a look at that very same scripture in a different translation. Whoever wants to save his life will give up a true life, and whoever gives up his life for me will have true life. It is worth nothing for a man to have the whole world if he loses his soul. He could never pay enough to buy back his soul. If we look at the greater context of this passage, Jesus was actually revealing to his disciples that he knew he was going to die by the hands of his enemies. 
He also said that following him required death, not a literal death, but a death of self in order to gain a true life. In a biblical sense, true life just means being in the full glory of God's grace. We can see that Watchtower has removed the word true from their translation, therefore changing the meaning to mean your actual waking life. Because to them, life does not mean more than the law. They have bastardized this rabbinic principle to mean everlasting life, which is something that they just made up. Take for example, this 1970 Watchtower article. Everlasting life is the reward for faithfulness. How foolish it would be to gamble away the prospect of life eternal for the uncertain promise of a cure by blood transfusion. We see these horrors realized in a 1975 yearbook stating, as Christian witnesses of Jehovah, her parents, Daryl and Rhoda Labrens, correctly viewed blood transfusion as a violation of God's law and thus opposed it. They were concerned about their baby's eternal welfare, for everlasting life is the prospect only of those adhering to God's laws. If Jehovah is the kind of God who would condemn a baby, an innocent child, to eternal damnation or eternal nothingness, I guess, in their mind, and, and force their parents to live their whole life their eternal life without their child is a god that I don't know why anyone would want to worship. He sounds pretty unhinged to me. But not only that, it's wrong to convince someone to give up the only life that they'll ever have and then go on to use their death to your benefit later. In a 2016 convention, governing body member Tony Morris grossly uses the death of a young boy to stir up his audience. We're not here to watch him now. We're here to get that boy better. So he can walk out and go back and do the things he loves, including the kingdom hall and meetings and field service. Well, one night, this is not it's very hard, but here's what happened. When Josh was in the hospital, uh, he said, Mom, a lot of times when you go to the bathroom or go to get dad, the doctors come in. And here's what they say, Josh, you need a blood transfer. Without it, you will die. We want to help you. You know what Josh responded? All alone. Then please respect my wishes about blood. He said, I told one doctor who tried to get me to take blood. <laughs> you may think I'm crazy, but I have all my thinking abilities. I just want to live by Jehovah's law on blood. He knows what is best for us. The best thing for me is to respect the sanctity of life. And if I die, I will live again. Good example of faith in the face of incredible stress and persecution. Amazing young fellow. And when he's resurrected, see, You'll hear more from him because Jehovah loves that little fella. Every other Abrahamic belief has condemned the ingesting of blood but has allowed for blood transfusions because it has always been that the preservation of life supersedes whatever restrictions are imposed by the law. It's obvious that the Watchtower organization is not guided by this principle found in the Bible, but it is clear that they are aware of the greater necessity of mercy as they've often used it to their advantage. Here in a 2015 Watchtower article, it says, for example, consider the account of Mark 5, 25 through 34. A woman with a flow of blood made her way through the crowd, touched Jesus' garment and was healed. She was unclean under the law, so she should not have touched anyone. But Jesus, who discerned that the weightier matters of the law included mercy and faithfulness, did not chastise her for touching his garment. Instead, he kindly said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed from your grievous sickness. How touching that Jesus' discernment moved him to show such kindness. 
kindness and mercy that they would never extend even to their own followers, despite countless examples of grace and mercy found in the gospel. Now, is it always true that a person will certainly die if they don't receive a blood transfusion? No, of course not. But it's also not guaranteed that receiving a blood fraction treatment can save a person's life either. And in fact, in most instances, those portions are not enough to oxygenate the organs and prevent you from suffocating. To ensure loyalty until death, every Jehovah's Witness is issued a blood card indicating what types of blood they will and will not take if ever they were incapacitated or unable to speak their own wishes. I even remember having mine notarized right in the mother freaking kingdom hall. These practices have also necessitated the creation of the HLC or the Hospital Liaison Committee. The HLC is a group of brothers who will arrive at the hospital to inform the medical professionals of their beliefs. They will also invoke them to use alternative bloodless solutions for the dying witness. I just want to add in here as well that these brothers are not there to be supportive or to offer counsel like they say that they are, but they are there to actually act as reinforcements. In healthcare matters, privacy is usually like a top priority, so it just doesn't sit well with me that they have a whole committee dedicated to coming in and speaking with susceptible and vulnerable people, trying to tell them what kinds of medical care they can and can't receive. And I think this is something that actually Jehovah's Witnesses have become very well known for, especially in the medical community. If you're considering using a product with fractions, make sure to talk with your doctor about the potential risks and possible side effects associated with it as well as what your other options may be. If you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you can also speak with a member of your local hospital liaison committee about the decisions you're facing. To Watchtower's credit, they have propelled many advancements in the medical community as they have had to invent new methods in order to respect these patients' wishes. These contributions, however, are made insignificant when in comparison to just how many people's lives have been lost over this belief. Isn't it true that when we maintain our integrity, even through serious illness, it can be a tremendous witness to others? That was the case with Jared Scepter. God's Word says, Remember then your grand creator in the days of your youth, before the days of distress come. In the days of distress, they arrived early on Jared at 11. Jared was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer in the middle of 1991. We started f trying to figure out how we could get him the treatment that he needed, of course, but in no way would we accept a blood transfusion, and neither would Jared. When Jared was in the hospital, Child Protection Services did investigate us. They were concerned there was negligence. The way it turned out, they backed completely away from that. They realized we hadn't been negligent. Uh, so as we faced different situations, we'd pray at the time, um, not to have miraculous answers, but uh, for Jehovah to open our eyes and to be able to find things. And it seemed as though he was really directing us so that we could take care of ourselves spiritually uh, through this situation, as well as uh, take care of Jared's medical needs. It was hard for us to get out of the hospital. So they recorded talks. They would look us in the eye and they'd say, you need to listen to this. It will keep you strong. He died in June of 1992. And the last thing he said to us was, work hard so we can all be together again. This doctrine is nonsensical and cruel. It's cruel to command parents to watch their child die when in any other instance they would make every effort to save their life. Enforcing rules upon children imposed by a cult that they had no choice but to be a part of is detestable. When you might be thinking to yourself, well, if a person didn't want to die, wouldn't they just take the blood transfusion? Like, couldn't you just do that regardless? Like, does it really matter? And the answer is yes. You're underestimating the amount of social pressure at play here, let alone the fact that willful acceptance of blood is a disfellowshipping offense. A person could be shunned for seeking life-saving medical care. Ultimately, this teaching just further speaks on how little 
autonomy Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed to have, even in matters of life and death. This is something that will unfortunately lead to more unnecessary deaths that will later be exploited by Watchtower for their benefit, to make sure that they can continue to keep people in and emotionally manipulate them. Your child died in this system? Well, guess what? You'll get to be reunited with them again in the paradise if you're good, if you do enough work, if you believe hard enough, then you will be with your child again. That's terrible. That's terrible to tell someone, but they're taking the death of young children and using that to further indoctrinate their current members. And they're holding the promise of paradise like a carrot over everyone's face, just hoping that they'll continue to work harder and work harder in service for them to their benefit. Don't give up the only life that you'll ever have for the sake of a paradise that is never coming. This one was rough, honestly, like... <laughs> But yeah, that was just my thoughts, just my opinion, and just my video. So, if you like this video, then you can leave it a like. And if you like me, then you can subscribe to this channel where I will be talking about whatever I want, whenever I want, because this is my channel. And that's what we do here, baby. So, subscribe! And as always, Chulas, I hope that you are having a beautiful, wonderful, amazing rest of your day.